Are you that guy who stalked me on the internet, found the exact apartment that I lived in, threw a roll of toilet paper onto my fire escape asking me out and promising to not bury me in the woods? Welcome! Make yourself at home, it seems like you already have. Yeah. So I live in East Village in downtown Manhattan and I moved in about a year ago. When I signed my lease in January, my rent was $2,000 a month, but my landlord actually since reduced it to $1,800 since the market rate in New York has gone down so much this year. My studio is around 250 square feet, separated into a main living room area and a little like bedroom slash dungeon in the back corner, which doesn't have any windows or a door, so it's not really a real room, but I like that there was that little bit of separation in the floor plan. We recording? Mm -hmm. I got all that wiggle. Uh -huh. Some of it was out of focus, but now all this wiggle is in focus. Real good stuff. Oh, keep going. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> welcome to my studio apartment where I live with myself and anywhere between one and 1,000 cockroaches inside the walls. We'll never know. So this main living room area is about nine by nine feet. So I had to decide up front whether I wanted an actual living room setup where I could like have people over and socialize normally, or if I just wanted to have a gigantic fucking desk. Um, and so yeah, I went with the desk and now when I have people over, there's like one armchair for people to sit in, otherwise they kind of sit on the floor, uh, or I bring them to the bedroom and have sex with them. This desk was one of the first things that I bought for the apartment and I was just really obsessed with the way that there are circles cut out of the legs. Um, I don't know man, shapes. I thought it was pretty groovy. And it's actually technically a dining table, but I wanted a really big desk because sometimes it like makes me nervous at like New York coffee shops where the tables are like this big and then you have like your laptop and your notebook and your phone and also your other notebooks and your pens and it's like all falling off the edges. I also got this office chair, which doesn't really match the rest of my decor, but I specifically got it because you're meant to sit in it like this. And then when you're drawing or like hunched over your desk, you know, you look like a complete idiot, but it kind of feels like the chair is hugging you, which I find soothing. Um, something, something, back support, lumbar support, etc. As you can see, I'm also collecting a small forest worth of plants. When I first moved in, I told myself I'd calm it down a bit on the plants this time. And then somebody kept like breaking into my apartment and leaving plants here and they were like, take care of them. And I was like, ah, I, guess I, I guess I have to, you know, it's kind of a hostage situation. Um, so now it looks like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. Uh -huh. Up here, in my windows, I also hung up these little crystal ball things and they reflat, re refract. Reflag? <laughs> I got them for like $10 online and they refract the sunlight when it's actually sunny out. I'll insert a clip here and they make little pretty rainbows on the walls. Also, when I was apartment hunting, I was so anal about finding an apartment with south facing windows because I am not exaggerating when I say that the direct sunlight that comes into this apartment is the only thing keeping me from slipping into a dark, dark seasonal depression. I just wanna get this shot of you climbing down. Very graceful. So over here, <laughs> this is what used to be a fireplace but is now a little bookshelf nook which I naturally filled up halfway with just more plants. And I also have my collection of little hipster cameras. This one is a Polaroid. You know that, because you know what a Polaroid looks like. This one is my 35 millimeter film camera for taking photos. And this one is my eight millimeter video camera. This one was really cool. I got it from Japan on eBay. I mean, this is gonna sound like the most hipster shit ever, but I really, really like shooting on film. I think that there's something kind of horrifying about when you're shooting on like a phone or on a digital camera like you are right now, there's no like marginal cost to shooting things again and again and again. So if you're kind of perfectionistic like me, you'll just use every chance possible to redo it and redo it to get like smaller and smaller increments better. Just like right now, because this is actually my second day filming this video and I'm just like wearing the same outfit for continuity. So if my hair changes in some of the shots, that's why. So I like that film forces you to have like a certain amount of time on a roll and you just like take the photo or take the shot and there's no reviewing it or no going back. You just look at it like two weeks later and kind of have to accept what it is, which I, am completely incapable of doing with digital. Um, so yeah. Very good mental health. Say cheese. Cheese. Did it work? It didn't flash. Why well, didn't it? It's on. Whoa. Hold on. 
say cheese. Yay! I am a professional. Oh, you're not supposed to shake them, actually. Okay, I'm gonna yeah, put that down. Sorry. <laughs> down here in this like two dollar fabric bin from IKEA is where I store all of my other camera equipment. So when I need to film, I just do a little. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, if any of my film professors saw this bin, they would absolutely bitch slap me across the face. Over here is kind of the closest thing that I have to a living room in this apartment, aka the just one armchair. This is where I sit sometimes when I want to pretend like I'm not just in the same apartment, you know, working from the desk, working from the armchair, that is the spice of life. I also sometimes sit here on Sundays and read an obscene number of Atlantic articles so I can pretend to be interesting and worldly and have something interesting to say in conversation. Um, I'm trying to think of something from a fucking Atlantic article that I can say for the bit, but I don't even yeah, remember anything, which I guess is the bit. This is an armchair that I thrifted in LA when I was like, how old was I? How many years ago was that? I thrifted this as an embryo. I got it for 50 cents uh, at a thrift store. Um, I'm a god. <laughs> and you convinced an LA boy to carry it home for you. I used a flock of, of carrier pigeons um, <laughs> to reduce my carbon emissions and they kind of flew it mm. home to me. Very green, very mm -hmm. green. Mm -hmm. I am eco-friendly. <laughs> this armchair is my oldest piece of furniture. I thrifted it three years ago in LA. Uh... And just still don't know how to sit in it. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I thrifted this armchair around three years ago in LA, so it's been with me, I think, the longest of any of my pieces of furniture. I nearly got... people. <laughs> I nearly got rid of it uh, two years ago, I guess also like people. <laughs> But I decided to, to kind of like keep it in a back corner of my apartment for like six months. Also, like, people. <laughs> Anyways, here it is with me today. I really like it. I love the color. I love the delphitiness. I have a weird obsession with like pink and green. So I got this little pillow. Here's a little stain on it from when I cut my ankle shaving uh, and then kind of just like bled all over my apartment and I couldn't get it out. Okay, now fast zoom. <laughs> Secession theme song plays. I have a love-hate relationship with this lamp. I think it looks pretty cute, like I like the arc, but whenever somebody sits in this armchair and then they get up, they like bonk their head on the lamp, including me, and I've lived here for like a year. I got it from Target and it's kind of fucking broken, but this was the second one I got. The first one I got was also broken and then I kind of uh, just settled. <laughs> <laughs> Also, like I do with people. <laughs> Look at me, I'm a camera boy. Mm. Okay. Oh, we're gonna do a mm. similar thing. <laughs> you want to talk about the abundance of mirror? <laughs> yeah. Over here, logically placed against my stove, the main place that you would put a mirror um, is a mirror. <laughs> I suppose now would be a good time to introduce you- Oh, that was such a weird walk over, like, huh? <laughs> I suppose now- <laughs> I suppose now would be a good time to- <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll I stop can't. laughing! <laughs> I'll stop laughing! <laughs> I suppose now would be a good time to introduce you to the small army of gold vintage mirrors that I've been collecting in case I need to take down a warship in 200 BC. I have this one placed against my stove, which is a logical and normal place for a mirror to be. Um, I have this one, which I use for outfit photos, and I have this one, which I use for looking myself in the face before I go and poop. Speaking of, this is my first of two bathrooms. Oh, she has two bathrooms in a studio, you ask? That's luxurious. That's unnecessary. Oh no, it's actually because it's one fucking bathroom split between two tiny closet-sized rooms for no fucking reason. Sorry if that's a first world problem. It just kind of infuriates me in terms of square footage, you know? This is basically just a pantry with a toilet in it, which happens to also double as, you know, like a phone booth for taking conference calls, a small room to store hostages in, or a self-timer background, which I actually have used for Instagram photos, or conveniently is actually where I 
put my camera when I'm filming fashion videos because my apartment doesn't have like enough length in any direction to film a full body shot unless I put my camera in here. So I have like little tape marks on the ground for where my tripod is supposed to go. Oh, and I also have this no dumping sign that I found in like a random alley. And because I'm immature, I think that's funny. Yeah. So you'd think that once you peed, you'd just head over to the second part of the bathroom over here where there's a sink for you to wash your hands. You would think that, wouldn't you? Why is it full of makeup, Ashley? Ah, uh, <laughs> basically this sink is, um, look, it's because I live in a 200 square foot studio, okay? Look, if New York has taught me anything, it is that any kind of useful utility can just be storage for fashion related objects if you try hard enough. You know, sinks are really just tables with dents in them, if you think about it. This is what it sounds like when I get ready in the morning. It's very relaxing, very zen. Mm. This is the rest of my bathroom. I've left this hairball that's constantly on my shower wall, kind of for the ambiance. I think it really like adds a nice little detail to the walls. It's like modern art if you really think about it. Mm. I have kind of a clusterfuck of shower products. Uh, and that's my bathroom. It's glamorous. What can I say? <laughs> Over here we have my kitchen, which is about 30% full of actual foodstuffs and about 70% full of shit that I didn't have anywhere else to store in my apartment. We have purses, purses, stuff that a normal human would find in their bathroom, uh, but I have here because this is now my functioning sink. So this is actually where I do my like skincare things. Um, sorry about like 40% of this apartment door has just been explaining how I don't know how to use a fucking sink. What do you use a sink for? I don't know anymore. There's this image that I saw online where it's like a bunch of objects, but you can't actually identify any of them and your brain just like struggles because all of them are nearly identifiable, but like complete mush. And it supposedly simulates what your brain feels like when you're having a stroke. So that's what I call this cabinet. It's my stroke image cabinet, a series of nearly identifiable objects with no actual theme or order whatsoever. Speaking of stroke images, this is what I call drawer because it's the only drawer in my entire apartment. You know, we got a normal variety of like BSM chokers, medical masks, masking tape. That's all kind of bondage themed, <laughs> if you think about it. A monkey peeler. I don't know, I was gonna say that could be used for BDSM, but that's really fucked up actually. <laughs> and down here is my cabinet of shame, full of just other shit that I don't know where to put. Another kitchen fun fact is that I changed out these knobs. I spent like a full three hours on specialty cabinet knob sites trying to figure out which knobs would match best with these ones. I got these kind of gold boys <laughs> and they have a jade thing in them. They're kind of green on the inside. I was gonna say you spent so long picking these out and you can't even describe them. <laughs> I've never seen someone <laughs> fail so hard <laughs> at picking three or four words it's one and of just resort to tactile. <laughs> this is what they sound like. It's not about the... <laughs> I wanted knobs that sound good. Here, listen. Yep. Listen. It's... Get the sound. Get the sound. Come on. Linguini. It's not about the taste. It's about the sound. On the fridge, I was initially... A fridgimally. <laughs> a fridgimally. <laughs> so originally when I moved here, I wanted to fill the entire fridge with these photo booth photos that you can get in bars in New York. These two are of my friends when I first came to New York about a year ago and decided that I wanted to move here. These are complete strangers that I don't know at all, but they happened to leave their photo booth strip in the photo booth thing. And I thought that they added to like the general atmosphere that I have more than five friends. Anyways, for obvious reasons, all the bars shut down in New York. So I ended up filling up this fridge with a bunch of these vintage photos of white people who were probably a little bit racist that I got at this thrift store out in Brooklyn. Also here is a Polaroid of a bitten cucumber on a bed. We don't talk about that. 
So over in this little nook, this is actually the front entrance of the apartment. And this is across from the kitchen because the floor plan of this apartment makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Basically in this apartment, I told myself I would go easy on the decor because admittedly in my last couple apartments, I have kind of gone overboard for a place I'm only gonna live for one year. And then quarantine happened and wallpapering became my only sense of purpose. So naturally I decided to wallpaper three things in my apartment that aren't walls. <laughs> I wallpapered the door, uh, which I was nervous was gonna look really disgusting, but I actually kind of like it. I wallpapered the side of my fridge and the side of a shelf. Um, what can I say? I'm kind of an interior design visionary. I'm making bold choices. And continuing on my mission to sacrifice absolutely every useful utility in this apartment for aesthetic purposes, I hung this little vintage painting over my peephole which also now doesn't work because I painted over it. Don't tell my landlord. And this is strategically positioned to cover up my circuit breaker, which I thought was kind of ugly. God forbid if I ever actually need to do anything with it. Oh no. <laughs> okay, we'll just leave that there for now. Since I had a little extra space in this nub, I just added my clothing rack, this is from Urban Outfitters, and this shelf that I picked up for free on the street to have a little extra cl closet space. As you will see in my bedroom shortly, something that I desperately need. Back here, we have my little bedroom nook, a room so small that you'll asphyxiate even if you aren't having sex. And I mean that quite literally because I actually had to buy this fan, which I kind of like point in this direction to increase airflow while I sleep at night because uh, my first couple months living here I did kind of suffocate a little bit and not in a sexy way. Jokes aside though, I actually do really like having a little small and cozy bedroom space. You guys might know because in my last apartment I literally slept inside a closet, so this is kind of nice and nostalgic for me. Another benefit is that you can't really see the sun from here because there's no windows, so you can literally sleep until like 3 p.m. and you'd have no idea what time of day it is, which has been both helpful and kind of dangerous during quarantine. As you can tell, I've also continued my love affair with the pink and green color combination. I painted the walls green partially because I wanted a pop of color, mostly because painting a room is like the most cathartic thing for me. I don't know, I just like blast songs about being young and free and it makes me feel like super independent and excited for life. Um, I don't know, maybe I just need to exercise more, maybe it's just an endorphin thing, maybe it's a paint fume thing, I guess we'll never know. I'm also quite proud of the lighting setup that I've got going on here. I put one of those color changing light bulbs. You can do a little a little sexy time light. You can't really see it because it's bright out right now. Um, ooh. Voice over Ashley here. This is how it actually looks at night. My personal favorites are the pink color for when I stay up until like 5 a.m. obsessively watching like three seasons of a new TV show because I have really bad impulse control. Or the blue light for reminiscing about times in my life that I don't actually remember that well and that I just have a vague sense of nostalgia for. On this side of the bed nook, we have the one and only closet in my apartment. When I toured this apartment, I was like, ooh, this is a really good sized closet, more than enough room for all of my clothes. Like I'm a New Yorker now. I don't need worldly belongings. I don't need an apartment. The city is my apartment. Cut to about two weeks later when my stuff arrived from LA. And I remembered that I have a mild clothing hoarding problem. Honestly, every now and again, I go through this like big minimalism phase. I like read a bunch of fucking books about it. I watch that minimalism documentary on Netflix. I get all worked out because I think minimalism is genuinely like really cool. I want to like, you know, reject the tenets of capitalism and shit like that. But at the end of the day, like I just fucking love clothes and I love all the details. I love thrifting things. So you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to have a really disgustingly packed closet, uh, but that's okay with me at this point. Uh, what else happens to be in this closet? Oh, it, surely it's not the Vogue magazine that I'm in. It's me. Okay, because I ran out of room in my closet, I also put together this giant Ikea shelf. Hello and welcome to What's on Ashley's Shelf, the game show where I show you things that are on my shelf. A bunch of clothes that I couldn't fit in my closet. A completely useless bit of lavender that just kind of sits there. Cheesy self-help books that I actually kind of genuinely like. This book is my favorite and this passage in particular always makes me cry. It goes, there is something I haven't told you, says the horse. What's that, said the boy. I can fly, but I stopped because it made the other horses jealous. Well, I love you, whether you can fly or not. Okay. 
Yeah, it's so sweet. A mini record speaker that actually spins when you play songs, which I thought was pretty cool. Two rocks that I found in the forest while I was on a little Mario one-up, shall we say, and stared at them for like two hours and then brought them home because I thought they seemed like friendly rocks. A disgusting tangle of charging cords. And of course, a bin full of- That was kind of dirty, actually. It's gross. No. How many of these are dirty? Most of them. You don't wash them? Well, not immediately afterwards, I just came. Ladies, wash your dildos. Over here at the top of the shelf, I also have more plants because I don't have enough plants in the rest of my apartment. I have this little plant light that imitates sunlight so they can survive up here in this sad windowless room. This boy is doing pretty well. He's nice and long. This guy is like, yeah, this one's a little wonky. Um, he got a dick with a little bit of curve. And these are a bunch of little propagations. These are Hitomi's Jameson. Hi, Hitomi. This is a sake container that I may or may not have smuggled home from a bar. I don't know if I was allowed to do that. These are a bunch of kombucha bottles. Um, and yeah, I'm just growing new little plants over there. Underneath my bed, I also have some storage for my filming lights. Various bags of clothes. I don't have a hoarding problem. And my printer uh, for easy use. And out here, is maybe my favorite feature. My fire escape. This is my favorite spot in the apartment to come out, take photos, flash strangers. This used to be one of my favorite parts of the apartment. I literally like, could not believe when I first moved here that every New York apartment actually has a fire escape. Like it seemed like something out of a movie. There's also a lovely old lady who lives next door and sometimes I would come out here and she would wave to me. Hi, how's it going? Are you having a good day? Unfortunately, I don't really come out here anymore though uh, because of the whole toilet paper stocking scenario. One of the many things men have ruined for me. And that's the apartment tour. So thanks so much for stopping by, unless you're that guy who stalked me, in which case you should know that I reported you to the police. The first police station I went to laughed at me and said that you were just being a nice guy, but that's on sexism. The second police station did take me seriously. So please don't murder me. Thank you. Also, I'm moving out of this apartment because of you. So I also won't be here. Bye now. And I hope I never see you ever. Where is it on? Oh, the light. Oh yeah, okay, the right. green light. Yeah. Sorry. The green light, I want it. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you keep your makeup in the sink, my dear? <laughs> uh, so bro. Uh-huh. You know, it's just like girls love like... Oh, they totally do. They love like inconvenient storage solutions. <laughs> wow. Uh -huh. Warship, no! Okay. Oh, oh, have you no respect for <laughs> naval history? So yeah, I hope you enjoyed and thanks for stopping by. I really want to go out and finger guns.